What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another critter format video. And in this video, we're going to be covering basically the same mass control list that I've shown off on the channel in the past, but I've made a very minor change adding the monster Muka Muka to the deck. I think Muka Muka is a really cool card in the format. And so I wanted to show it off in some capacity. That being said, the main reason that I'm showing off these duels is just because I thought they were some really good ones and I wanted to show them off because I think they're very fun to watch. Before we dive into the deck breakdown, if you enjoy my content and enjoy seeing Critter Format duels, Yugi Kaibo Format duels, that sort of thing, then please consider liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot, especially for a small channel like mine. And the next milestone we're trying to reach is 250 subscribers, which I think we can hopefully do by the end of this month. So if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. But with that out of the way, let's dive in to this deck breakdown. So this list is almost identical to Jazz's mass control list that I've shown off on the channel in the past, as I mentioned before. And the main goal of this deck is to just keep up on card advantage over your opponent, using things like Mass Sorcerer to draw into more cards, potentially a White Magical Hat to discard a card from their hand, and keeping on some aggressive pressure with things like Lodgins and Seven Colored Fishes, and now Muka Muka. Muka Muka is a very interesting card in this format because on first read through, you might think this card looks pretty bad. Basically, the 600 attack point monster that just gained 300 attack and defense for every card in your hand. So, in order to get this thing to even stats with a Lodgin or 7 colored fish, you need to have 4 cards in your hand. But, given that this deck's goal is basically to keep up on card advantage by drawing more cards, and given the prevalence of something like Heavy Storm in the format preventing you from setting too much back row, in general, you will be able to satisfy this condition pretty easily, and oftentimes you'll be able to go higher than four cards, buffing this up over something like a Lodge in Seven Card Fish, or even over the defense of a Giant Soldier of Stone. All this makes Muka Muka a very, very flexible and good card to play, and it can also be searched out by both Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest, as well as brought out by something like Last Will. So I decided to add to the deck, switching out the third copy of Mass Sorcerer that was in Jazz's original list. Do I think this changes the deck that much? Well, not really, to be honest, but I do think that it's a nice inclusion to have, and it can come in very clutch in certain situations. Providing yourself with more flexibility is always a good thing in my mind, so I like its inclusion here. For the other cards in the deck, of course we've got two Sangan, two Witch of the Black Forest, these can search out pretty much everything in your deck. We've also got two Magician of Faith to cycle very powerful spells, of which there are a lot in this format. So this can be insanely strong if you manage to pull it off. And we also have a Cannon Soldier to close out games. In addition to the Muka Muka to provide beatdown, we've also got a 7 card Fish and 3 Lodge in to provide more consistent beatdown. There are cases where you don't have 4 cards in hand or don't want to have 4 cards in hand. So these monsters just having 1800 base attack at all times is pretty nice in that regard. And we also have a Giant Soldier of Stone to act as a defensive wall in cases where we need it. For the spells, we have, of course, the Power 5 Limited Spells, Change of Heart, Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, Pot of Greed, and Raigeki, all insanely strong. We also have three Fisher to clear away our opponent's monsters, potentially allow our White Magical Hats and Mass Sorcerers to get in for damage to draw cards. We have two Heavy Storm, very powerful, just clearing away our opponent's back row, allowing us to attack him with our monsters without fear of things like Mirror Force or Trap Hole. We also have two Last Will, which can be very good at fetching out things like Mass Sorcerer and White Magical Hat if our opponent's playing some Trap Holes. It can also fetch out Muka Muka, as I mentioned, which can be insanely strong if you have a bunch of cards in hand. And lastly, for the spells, we have two Swords of Revealing Light, which is great at stalling your opponent for a bit to allow you to draw into things that you need to out their board. It can also flip things up for Fisher. Uh, it's another potential application of this card. That can come up occasionally. For the traps, we are playing one Mirror Force, which is just an insanely powerful card if you actually manage to pull off its effect. We have three Solemn Judgment, just to negate any big plays that our opponent would try to make. It can be very, very good in a controlling deck like this one. We have three Trap Hole to act as removal on our opponent's turn. We have three Waboku to protect our monsters and our life points, and also to prevent the effects of things like Mass Sorcerer and White Magical Hat from being able to be used against us. I kept the side deck the same. The side deck has a Jinjo number 7 to pair with Robin Goblin Fake Trap, 
along with card destructions plus three Thunder Dragons to add a bit more hand control aspects to the deck, like let's say you're facing Xodi or something, that can be useful in those matchups. The deck can also get a bit more aggressive with two Jirai Gumos in the side as well. And if we need more removal, we have two Maneater Bugs to clear the way. If our opponent's playing a pretty back row heavy deck, Princess of Sarugi can come in to punish them for that. And lastly, if we want to get a bit more defensive, we have a Giant Soldier of Stone here. There is a Fusion deck here, but, you know, we're not going to be able to go into any of these. This is more just for mind games. Maybe our opponent will think that we're on a Fusion deck when we first load into the game with them. And now that we're done with the deck breakdown, let's dive right into the games to see how the deck performs. Okay, we've got a game against Deo Zomp here, a very active duelist in these retro formats. Always great to feature them on the channel. We're on the mass control deck I just showed off. Unclear what he's on as of yet, but let's find out. We do win the rock, paper, scissors, which is very nice. And we will be able to go first here. This is a pretty great hand. Witch plus trap hole is very nice. And we've got mirror force for later if we need it. We've got Fisher to deal with whatever our monster, our opponent brings out as well. Oh, this is just a great hand. A lot of different options that we can go for here. But I think the best move is just to set the Witch, set Trap Hole, pass. If they bring out a Beater to get over the Witch, we can always clear it with the Trap Hole. But it looks like they're just going to set two and pass. Mass Sorcerer is a pretty great draw here. But we might not be able to clear their set. The only th way we have to actually clear the way here is Dark Hole, which could be a bit risky. If it's like a Recruiter of their own, then activating Dark Hole here could actually be kind of bad. But if we do activate Dark Hole, we do get a Witch Search. And we will potentially be able to get in for Mass Sorcerer to gain some advantage. So it might honestly be worth doing. We're going to think about it for a bit. And we are just going to go for it. So we fire the Dark Hole. We get lucky. It wasn't a Recruiter. It was just a Mass Sorcerer. So our opponent won't be able to get any advantage off of that, and we'll be able to search out a Lodge in. We'll bring out a Mass Sorcerer and try attacking in here, and it will succeed, so we'll be able to draw a card, which is very nice. Another Trap Hole is pretty nice. That means that we can use the Trap Hole we have set without fear of having one for later. We can just set the other one we drew. And they're just going to set one and pass. We're feeling really good about that. Sangan's a great draw. This will allow us to keep up the offensive pressure going here. We can summon out Sangan and just try and attack in. If they've got Mirror Force, they've got Mirror Force, but we can get a search off of the Sangan, which is very nice. Looks like they do have Mirror Force. So we will think about what we're going to get here. Since it seems like they didn't really have a good way to deal with the Mass Sorcerer, we're just going to grab another one figuring that we can likely bring it out next turn and keep on getting in some advantage. And main phase two, we're just going to set a Waboku. If their set is a heavy, we get kind of punished by this, but at least we can chain Waboku in response, and Waboku protects against if they have a mass sorcerer of their own. They're going to draw. They're just going to set one and pass back to us. We're feeling very good about this. We're just going to bring out another mass sorcerer, attack in, and we will get to draw here, which is very nice. Swords is a good draw for later, but we don't really need it right now. Our opponent will Fisher away the Mass Sorcerer, but honestly, it got us a lot of value, so we're okay with that. They're just going to set one pass back to us, and we can just go on the aggressive here. Oh, I guess we're activating Swords in case it's like a Defender, so we can Fisher that away. I guess that makes sense. They're going to flip up a Magician of Faith, and we get kind of punished for going for the swords here. And they will trap whole our Lodge in, so we can't even go on the aggressive. Kind of unfortunate. They're just going to set one pass back to us. Last one would have been great a turn ago, but unfortunately, it doesn't really do us much here. We're going to summon out Lodge in. That's fine by them. And we're just going to attack into the Magician of Faith. I guess we're saving the Fisher for a monster that we'll have a bit more trouble getting over later. So we're just going to pass back to them. They're going to Fisher out our Lodge in. Set one, pass back to us. Reborn's pretty good. It allows us to get a bit more on the aggressive here, especially because we know that they don't have Mirror Force anymore. But whether we want to use it now is a matter of debate, I guess. We're just going to bring out a Giant Soldier that will get Trap Hold, so now we can use the last will in hand to bring out a monster. We could bring out Mooka Mooka, but I honestly don't think we should. 
We could bring out White Magical Hat, which would honestly be great, potentially getting in and sniping a card from our opponent's hand. So I think that is what we're going to do. We are out of Mass Sorcerer in the deck, so we can't get any of those. Maybe an argument to include another Mass Sorcerer instead of the Muka Muka. But honestly, I think bringing out White Magical Hat is fine on this board state, so I'm not too torn off about this. We're going to attack in. They're going to Waboku to protect their life points in their hand. And we're just going to pass back to them. We're still feeling pretty confident here. They're going to set two pass back to us. And Solemn is a good draw. That will enable us to prevent any big plays that they try and make to get out of this board state that we've got. We're just going to reborn a Lodge in here. And hope that it's enough to get over their set and get in with White Magical Hat for some damage. They're going to fire another Waboku here. And it is a Mass Sorcerer. Now we figure one of the reasons why they might have fired the Waboku on the Mass Sorcerer here is because they have some way to deal with our board state. So we are just going to Fisher preemptively, clear the Mass Sorcerer, prevent them from being able to attack him with it next turn and get some more advantage. And we're just going to pass back to them. They're going to bring out Seven Color Fish and we're just going to trap hole that. And they're going to think about it. So it seems like they do have a counter trap back there so that's good to keep in mind for later and they're just going to ride geki the board away maybe this is an argument for having set the solemn just to preserve this board state but i don't think it was necessary with another solemn you know there's more reason to set it i really don't know why we didn't set a solemn there or even two if they tried to heavy storm the board we could activate solemn if they've got a solemn their own we solemn their solemn I don't know. I think this was a bit of a mistake. They bring out a Lodge in. We'll just trap hole it. And they'll pass back to us. Magician of Faith is pretty great. We're just going to set it. And I really think we should have set the Solemn Judgment here in case they have a change of heart. Also, it seems unlikely that they have a Heavy at this point or are willing to use it. So I think that we could just set the Solemns and be pretty secure in them not having. But I don't know. It's a bit iffy. They're just going to set one pass back to us. Muka Muka is an okay draw, but we don't really have the most cards in hand. Magician of Faith will hopefully help us in that regard. So we're going to flip it up, and we're going to target Monster Reborn to hopefully get a bit more aggressive pressure on the board, but they're going to Solemn our Magician of Faith. So that would have been a good time to use a Solemn of our own if we had a set, but unfortunately we did not. We're just going to pass back to our opponent, preferring not to summon out the Muka Muka, because Muka Muka would only have 1500 attack, which isn't quite enough to survive a Lodge in attack. We're just hoping that Woboku will be good enough. And they don't have any more counter traps on field to negate Woboku. So if they do bring out a ton of damage, then we could just fire it and be secure in that knowledge that it will be safe. They're going to bring out a Sangan, and they're going to flip up a Witch, and they're just going to attack in for 21. We're honestly just going to take it. That's fine by us. We need to save the Waboku for later when we potentially used up some Solemns and are down to very low life points. So there's no real reason to use it now. Swords is a decent draw here, but we're just going to bring out Muka Muka and try hitting in. So we're going to hit into the Sangan, and they'll take 8. And we could keep a bunch of cards in hand, and that might be what we want to do here, because that will keep our Muka Muka buffed up, and that is what we're going to do. We've got Woboku if they try to crash with a Lodge in or 7 Colored Fish, and if they don't, next turn, Muka Muka will bump up to 2100 attack, which is pretty nice. They're going to Dark Hole the board away, which is a very interesting choice, but it's basically what we did earlier, right? They clear the Witch, they get a Surge off it, and now they can bring out a monster and be secure that it will be able to attack in. So they're going to search out Lodgen, and they are going to bring out the Lodgen. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think I would have brought out the Mass Sorcerer if I were in their shoes, because it does dodge trap hole, and they will be able to get a draw off of it. But I think Lodgen's respectable if you just want to get the damage going. And also, if you don't have a way to protect the Mass Sorcerer, it can be pretty good. So we're going to take 18, and they'll pass back to us. Which is a pretty great draw. We're just going to set the Witch. And now we are going to commit. We're going to set just one Solemn. We're only really afraid of Heavy here. If they have two Heavies, that's really unfortunate. But if they don't, then we can Mirror Force and potentially clear away a lot of their monsters. 
They're going to change of heart and get the witch, and they will just go in for a ton of damage here. We could mirror force this because that will enable us to get a search and then potentially just be able to get in for a ton of damage. That might be the way to go. We do just Waboku this though, and they're just going to set one and pass back to us. Since we can't really go aggressive here, we're just going to switch the witch to defense, set another solemn, and pass back to them. They're going to fissure away the witch, which is honestly fine because we get a lodge in, which will be able to allow us to go a bit more aggressive next turn. They're going to flip up Mass Sorcerer, and this is honestly perfect. We've got Mirror Force to clear away their entire board. They're just going to set one pass back to us, and, you know, we can just go for a ton of damage here. We're going to Swords, flipping up their Cannon Soldier, summon out Lodge in, fissure away their Cannon Soldier, and just attack in for 1800. Now, if we get a Cannon Soldier of our own, we basically win the game. But even if we don't, you know, we've got Solemns set, so we can negate pretty much whatever they do and they're down to one card so it's very tough for them to survive in this scenario they're just going to activate heavy and that will just be the end of the game so you know muka muka came up that game dealt 800 damage pretty good now if that had been a mass sorcerer like it was originally that also wouldn't have been too bad to draw in that situation because we would have just been able to set it they only had to stand in Witch on Field. They wouldn't have been able to clear that easily. But I liked having the ability to go a bit more aggressive with that Mooka. And it did force them to use up the Dark Hole. So that was pretty nice. For the side decking, I don't actually think we changed anything. Because they're just on a standard mass control build, it looked like. So we don't really feel the need to switch up our game style. Because our deck is kind of already well suited for this mirror match anyways. So we go into game two and don't really change anything about our deck. We will be going second this time because Deo did lose game one, so they will get to choose to go first. And this is also not a bad hand. We can go a bit aggressive here with seven colored fish and change of heart. We've got last will in case they've got a trap hole for the seven colored fish. And we also have solemn in case we really need it. They're going to bring out Jiraguma, set one pass back to us. Well, Boku's a very good draw here. Gives us a bit of insulation. We're going to bring a 7 colored fish trying to bait out a trap hole. Unfortunately, they don't bite. And we could go for the change of heart here, dropping them down to 4,000 potentially. But I think we're going to try and save it. We're going to activate swords, set one, and pass back to them. The Woboku is there in case they have a heavy. You know, we can chain Woboku and protect ourselves. They are going to heavy. We're going to chain Woboku. And they do have a solemn judgment, so they will be able to deal battle damage, and destroy our monsters this turn, which is kind of rough for us. They're going to bring out 7 colored fish, Fisher away our 7 colored fish, and they'll be able to get in for 4,000. So while they did drop down half their life total, they also dropped us down half our life total. So it kind of evens out a little bit. And they have two monsters on board. So they don't set anything here, which means that if we are able to break this board, we can potentially get in for a fair amount of damage. And Monster Reborn will actually enable us to break this board and actually win the game, unless they have Karibo, of course. It's a bit convoluted to get there, but it's a pretty fun sort of combo. So let's see how I pull it off. We're first going to activate Reborn to bring out a 7-colored fish. Then activate Last Will. If you activate Last Will before a monster has been destroyed during your turn, the first time a monster does get destroyed and gets sent to your graveyard during your turn, you'll be able to bring out a monster from the deck, even if it happens at the battle phase, which will be very important for us. We're going to change of heart targeting their Jirai Gumo, and we're just going to crash our 7-colored fish into their 7-colored fish. Since our 7-colored fish hit the graveyard, Last Will will trigger, and we'll be able to get out a Cannon Soldier. This means we've got 3,600 damage from the attacks, and Cannon Soldier will be able to tribute away their Jiragumo to deal the remaining 500. And that will be the end of the game. Honestly, this combo wasn't even the worst if they had a Karibo, because they likely would have Kariboed the Jiragumo attack, but we would have still been able to tribute it off for Cannon Soldier removing their monster. And we'd have a Solemn to back up the Cannon Soldier. I think the second game really shows you gotta be careful with managing your life points in this format. Because while Solemn Judgment is a very powerful card, there are ways for decks to just win out of nowhere in one turn, given some of the very, very powerful spells in the format. But since the second game was so quick, we also played a another match, and I think that match is a great one as well, so let's dive into those games. 
So we've got a rematch against Deo Zomp. We're playing the same deck, and they are as well, since we went right into a rematch. But I think showing off more of this sort of mass control mirror is very useful, because this is a very common matchup in the format. And people can build mass control in many different ways, which makes it a very exciting mirror to see. This is a pretty good start. We've got Muka Muka first thing. So something that we could do here is we could just set Muka Muka and pass. This way it will be able to dodge trap hole, and since we'll have 5 cards remaining in hand, it will have 1800 defense, which is good enough to block pretty much everything in the format. So I think that is what we're going to do. We're just going to set the Muka Muka and hope that they can't get over it. Unfortunately, they bring out a Muka Muka of their own, so they are able to hit over our Muka Muka. And that's just really unfortunate. We would have liked that because we do have a lot of cards in hand at this point. We do have a Fisher to deal with their Muka Muka, so we'll just do that. We'll summon out Sangan, attack in for a thousand. And we're just going to set these swords because we figure if they heavy this, we do lose swords with a very powerful card. But if they have heavy, heavy's going to hit swords anyways whenever we bring it down. So we might as well just set it as a bluff. And we'll pass back to them. They're going to bring out a Sangan of their own. Attack into our Sangan. And we're going to both get a search here. We're going to search out Mass Sorcerer. So that way we can potentially get some draws in here. And they're going to search out a Mass Sorcerer as well. They're going to set one pass back to us. And we're just going to summon out Mass Sorcerer. Try and attack in. And we do succeed. So we will get to draw a card there. We're going to set a Woboku. Pass back to them. They will heavy here. We're going to chain Woboku. So we do lose our swords, but at least they can't get over our mass sorcerer this turn. And we draw another sword, which is great, honestly. Uh, we could just leave the mass sorcerer here in case they have no way to get over it. But we do know they've got a mass sorcerer in hand, and we don't necessarily want them to get any advantage here. So we're just going to activate the swords of our own and pass back to them. They're going to set a monster, set a spaller trap, pass back to us. And we're just fine with things as they are. If they heavy storm this, I mean, they're losing more than we are. So we don't really care about that. And we're just going to keep passing back and forth. We are going to set the Woboku just in case. They are losing swords this turn. And if their set card is heavy storm, then Woboku will provide us some insulation here. They're going to lose the swords. They're just going to pass back to us. And we are going to think about this for a bit we could go a bit aggressive here summoning at which raigekiing away their monster we could also change of heart their monster a bunch of different options here we are going to choose to change of heart their monster they're going to solemn judgment that so we take that to mean that that set monster is likely not a recruiter or else they wouldn't really care so we are just going to fire the raigeki here and we do manage to clear mass sorcerer we're just going to try and get in for 2,000 and draw a card with Mass Sorcerer, and we're in a very, very good position here. Woboku is a great draw to replace the Woboku that we have on field if we use it up. And they're going to bring out a 7 card Fish and attack into our Mass Sorcerer. Honestly, we're okay with this. We don't need to really preserve Mass Sorcerer on the field, especially because we don't really have a way to clear the 7 card Fish next turn. They're going to set one pass. Solemn is nice, but doesn't really do anything here. We're going to set the Magician of Faith, set the Witch of the Black Forest, set a Solemn to prevent them from potentially taking our Magician of Faith, and just pass back to them. If we are able to get a spell back with Magician, then we can clear the 7 card Fish next turn and potentially get him for lethal damage. They're going to Raigeki our board, or attempt to at least, and we are going to Solemn Judgment this. I think this is maybe a mistake, because if they have a change of heart to follow up on this with, then they know that our set monster is a very good card to change of heart here, because we don't want to lose it to the Raigeki. But we go for it anyways, and we get kind of punished here, because they do have the change of heart. They are able to flip up Magician of Faith and get a spell to hand. They're going to get Swords of Revealing Light, which will put a damper on our plans to win here. But, you know, we do have a way to potentially win the game, even through swords. So they're going to beat over our witch, attack directly with the magician, and we're going to use witch to search out cannon soldier. And we actually are able to just win the game from this position, because we will get Magician of Faith back in the end phase. If the cannon soldier sticks to the landing, then we'll be able to 
deal a thousand just from Can Soldier and Magician of Faith on board, but we have Last Will on hand to bring out another monster as well, so that will be 1500 if everything goes according to plan. We're going to bring out Cannon Soldier and attempt to use the effect with priority. That is allowed, so we'll tribute off Magician of Faith, activate Last Will, and that will be the end of the game. And this is what I mean when I say Cannon Soldier can just win games out of nowhere. Even through Swords, we were able to amass the amount of damage that we needed because Solemn Judgment is a very popular card in this format, and Solemn Judgment can lower life points to a threshold that Cannon Soldier can easily get over. Going into game two here, I don't think we made any changes to the sideboard because, again, you know, it's the mass control mirror. We're already pretty set for this. So we're just going to keep the deck the same, I'm pretty sure. They will get to go first here. They're going to Pot of Dread, draw two. They're going to set two cards, pass back to us. We're just going to set the Witch. I think this was a mistake. We should have Pot of Greed first and then set the Witch, but we didn't. And maybe we would have wanted to go for the lodge in instead of the witch, but we made our play and we got to stick by it. We're just going to set trap hole and solemn judgment. If they do have a heavy set there, this is kind of punishing. We could solemn the heavy, but honestly, do we really want to? Uh, it's iffy. They're just going to set one pass back to us. White magical hat is okay, but not the best. We're going to bring out a lodge in that will meet a trap hole, and they're just going to pass back to us. They're going to set another card, pass back to us, and we're just going to bring out Cannon Soldier. We're not going to use the effect with priority. We're just going to flip a Witch and try attacking in. Unfortunately for us, that is a Muka Muka, so we will not be able to get over it. And we're just going to set the Mirror Force in case they try attacking in with the Muka Muka next turn. We're figuring that they're not likely to Heavy given the amount of back row that they have, and if they do Heavy, we do have a Solemn. They're going to try attacking into the Cannon Soldier, and we will just Mirror Force away that Muka Muka. But unfortunately, they do have a Dark Hole to follow it up with, so we will lose our field. Luckily, Witch will be able to search a Lodge in here. And I think maybe we should have gotten, like, a Mass Sorcerer, which can get under Trap Hole. But it's kind of iffy. They could bring out another monster here, because they haven't Normal Summoned yet. And they do indeed. We're going to Trap Hole that away. And we draw a Muka Muka of our own, which is pretty nice. We're just going to try bringing out White Magical Hat, though, and try and snipe a card out of their hand. Unfortunately, they have Woboku. We're just going to set the trap hole there to hopefully protect our White Magical Hat. But they're going to bring out a Mass Sorcerer and then Fisher away our White Magical Hat, or attempt to. We're going to Solemn Judgment, and maybe this is a bit greedy because they likely have some other way to clear the White Magical Hat. And they do use that other way. They're going to Reborn out a seven colored fish and that will be able to clear the white magical hat while also getting around our trap hole we're going to take 800 and then 900 they will get to draw a card there they'll set one pass back to us another solemn is okay but honestly we would have preferred something a bit better we are going to you know see what they've used up they've used up dark hole now we could set magician of faith here to potentially try and get back the pot of greed we do have a trap hole to prevent them from bringing out another monster, and we have the Solemn in case they try to change of heart or write Geki or Magician. Could be the way to go. We do also have a Lodgin that we can bring out, try and clear the Mass Sorcerer. We could go that route as well. But we gotta think about it a bit. We're just going to set the Magician of Faith, set the Solemn, pass back to them. They are going to attack into the Magician. We're gonna get a Pot of Greed, and they're going to try attacking directly with the Mass Sorcerer. We'll take 900, and they will get to draw a card there, unfortunately. They'll pass back to us. Sangin's okay. We can bring it out to attack over the Mass Sorcerer. But let's see what else we get with the pot. So we're going to pot, and we draw into Last Will Heavy, which is not the worst, honestly. If we try and bring out a beater like La Jin, potentially, and they trap hole it, then we can Last Will out a defender like Giant Soldier, which could be worth doing. We're going to think about this for a bit. We're actually going to bring up Muka Muka because it ties with Lodgin and it is potentially less good than Lodgin because we are likely to be using a Last Will here if we lose a beater. They're going to Horn of the Heaven and I actually make a big mistake here. I'm thinking, okay, this will send Muka Muka to Grave so I can activate Last Will, but I forget that because counter traps like Horn of Heaven do negate the summon, 
the monster isn't technically counted as hitting the field. So I won't actually be able to trigger last will here if I let this resolve. So I actually do have to solemn here if I want to let this play go through. Unfortunately, I don't think of that and I do let it resolve and that will just be the end of the game because they have game on board. If I had remembered it, I would have dropped down to 600. Muka Muka was stuck on field, but they've got a solemn judgment of their own set, so they could have just solemned our solemn, and honestly, that would have been fine for them. So I don't really think there was a way we could have won this one from this game state. But that will be the end of the game, and Horn of Heaven put in work at the end. I think in general, people don't play Horn of Heaven because its cost is a bit too much. Sure, if you've got a recruiter on field to pay it, then it's kind of mitigated a bit. But in general, it's a bit too niche, I think, for most decks to support. However, it did come in clutch there for Deo. So maybe it's something to experiment more with in the future. But now we're going into game three. And I don't really know if we change anything here. I think we keep it the same because, again, you know, it's a mass control mirror. Not really much we can do to switch things up too much. Maybe we could side in Princess of Sarugi knowing that they're on more counter traps like Horn of Heaven, but I don't really feel it's necessary. We are going to go first here, and this is a pretty good hand. A lot of good beaters and pot to buff up Muka Muka if we want it. We are just going to set the Muka Muka and hopefully they don't have another Muka Muka to get over this like last time. If they do, we do have Mirror Force, but we might not necessarily want to use Mirror Force this early. They're just going to set three and pass, and this is pretty good for us. We can bring out Lodge in, trying to bait a trap hole a bit, flip up Muka Muka, and I guess we're just hoping that they don't have a Mirror Force this early in the game. And luckily it seems like they don't. So we're going to get in for 1800. They will search out a Jirai Guma, which is kind of rough, but we do have Mirror Force set to clear it potentially. So we're going to set the Solemn, pass back to them. Maybe we shouldn't have set Solemn uh, because we do have Heavy. So if we just use the Mirror Force and whatever monster they bring out, we could just Heavy away their back row on the next turn because we'd have our own back row clear. But I think we really want the Mirror Force to resolve and knowing how many counter traps they play, they likely have a way to counter the Mirror Force so I think we set the Solemn for that purpose. They're going to bring out Lodge in and try and crash with Muka Muka because Muka Muka now is down to 1800. And they're going to activate Uboku. We'll just let that go through. We don't really mind that. Boku of our own is not terrible. We're going to bring a seven colored fish and try clearing the Lodge in and that will connect. So we will be able to hit in with our other Lodge in for 18. And we're just going to set a Uboku. If they do decide to heavy, Woboku is a good option. If they bring out another 1800 beater, then we can just Woboku to protect our Lodgin. So not the worst thing there either. They're going to bring out a Lodgin and they're going to try to... Oh, they're going to Reborn. Okay, so they're going to bring out another Lodgin. And now they're just going to attack in. We could Woboku this. It might be the move because we know that they have Jirai Gumo in hand that they can bring out later, and we might want to save the Mirror Force for the Jirai Gumo. So they're going to attack in to our Lodge, and we are going to Woboku. They're going to Solemn Judgment the Woboku to clear the board away. And we're going to think about this because we could Solemn this ourselves, but I don't think we care enough to do that. So we'll let the Lodge in die. They're going to set one, pass back to us. And we are going to draw here. Fisher is nice, but we don't really need it. We're just going to activate Swords. They're going to Solemn the Swords. So they're going to drop down to 1100 now. We're feeling very good about this. They're going to attack in for 18, but honestly, we don't really mind that too much. We can save Mirror Force for later if we need it. We've got Fisher to deal with the Lodge in if we can't clear it through other ways. Another Solemn is okay. We might want to set that given that they might have other Solemns. So we can Solemn a Solemn. We are just going to set it pass back to them. They're just going to keep up the offensive pressure here with the Lodge in. We drop down to 26. That Lodgin's put in a lot of work, and Woboku is nice, but I think we just want to clear that Lodgin, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to clear it, set a Woboku, pass back to them. They're going to bring out a Jirai Gumo and try attacking in. And they do call the coin flip right, but we do have Mirror Force to clear away that Jirai Gumo. White Magical Hat is pretty nice. We can bring that out. It will be Trap Hold potentially, but we do have Solemns to deal with that. So we are actually going to Solemn that because we figure that 
if we can get in and discard a card from their hand, that's really nice. And if we get them to use up Boku, that's also fine. So we're going to attack in, and they will choose to Waboku this. And we're debating Solomon here, because if we Solomon, we drop them down to 100 life points, and we discard the last card in their hand. So it might also be worth doing it. We do have a Waboku set as well. So if they do manage to get over the White Magical Hat and try and get in for damage, then we could protect ourselves in that way. So I think it is a reasonable thing to Solemn here, and I think we actually should have done it, especially knowing that they've gone through two Solemns on their own, so it's unlikely they have another one. But I think we let that go through because we figure that we're in such a winning position anyways that it's unlikely that they can really recover from this. Maybe this was a mistake. They do change of heart the White Magical Hat and attack in. I think this would be a very good point to Waboku, but I think we hold it because we're not too concerned about losing either of the cards in our hand here. But we're gonna think about it a bit. And they are fine with that. So, or we are fine with that. So we will take a thousand and we will lose the Heavy Storm, which is kind of rough because next turn we could have potentially heavied away their board. If they do have Waboku, we could chain Solemn Judgment to it. But that didn't happen, and they do bring out a Cannon Soldier, so this would actually be lethal damage if we did not have this Solemn. We've just got to hope that their last card isn't a Solemn, and luckily it seems like it is not, so we will be able to prevent dying from that Cannon Soldier. But I think this is more of an argument for us having Waboku there. I think it was a mistake not to Waboku. Luckily we have Magician of Faith, so we're just going to try bringing out Magician of Faith and attacking in for lethal damage. And that does succeed. Looks like their last set was a Horn of Heaven. And this is maybe an indication for why Horn of Heaven doesn't see much play, because in situations like this where you don't already have Field Presence established, it can be pretty bad. But that was a really intense match. And I think that both of these matches were really intense and fun to watch. So I hope that you agreed. The Mass Control Mirror is one of the most common matchups in the format, but it's also one of the funnest matchups to play and one of the matchups that really get you thinking about how to actually maneuver it. So, I'm always glad to show off this sort of match. But what did you think about these games? Do you want to see more mask control mirrors on the channel? Do you want to see me mix up this deck list a little bit more? Do you want to see me experiment with Horn of Heaven? Please let me know in the comments below. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGO From Zero, and I'm signing off.